Nobody else can either. We can't hear what's being said. I know Blake is not a fan. Can everybody hear now? Can everybody hear me? Hello. <laughs> we can hear you now. <laughs> oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we okay, well then I will leave. <laughs> okay.
So um, let me see if I can go roughly about what I already said. Again, my name is Elba Torres. I'm the loan officer with Bank of England. Originally, I'm from Nicaragua. Wait, sorry, turn so up the volume. Spanish. Hola a todos los que hablen español. So um, I've been in uh, banking for uh, almost 20 years. I'm not gonna say at what age I start because, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I the last bank I worked in a banking center was Bank of America here in Inglewood. And uh, I've been with Bank of England for about a year already. I was with another mortgage company. And something that I really love, and I was sharing that with you guys, something that I really love about Bank of England is the support we have as a loan officers. Um, like, especially for me, because I bilingual, I speak Spanish. I do have a loan officer assistant who speaks Spanish. I do have processor who speaks Spanish. And I do have underwriters who speak Spanish. And we have everything in the house. So we, uh, processing underwriters and everybody is in the house. So I can call them, I can go and have lunch with them and discuss any problems or resolve any issues with any mortgage loan. So that makes our job a lot much easier and makes it for you as well. Um, right now with the COVID, you know, how you know the situation has been, and I know there are a lot of mortgage companies that are not closing the deal before 45 days. So they have been meeting at least 45 days. We have closed all our loans in 30 days. We're still closing in 30 days. And regular time and normal time before the COVID, we were closing in 21 days. So I'm very, very proud of that. But if you guys have any question, because we do have five people in the room, so I'm going to interact with these people. Unfortunately, I do not have anybody who can check the chat. I'm going to jump a little bit, you know, to see if you guys I have any questions. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you. Yeah, because I would love, you know, people uh, through Zoom to participate as well. So today we're going to talk about forbearance. And I know it's a big problem going on right now. But I want to ask you guys, to you and people through Zoom, do you know what forbearance is? Have you heard that term before? Yes? Yes. OK, what do you hear before? What do you know about forbearance? It's about the mortgage payments that were forgiven becoming due. Okay, okay. I think. Forgiven becoming, okay. Let's see if we can write that, forgiven. That, that's the, the key. Uh, the, can I move this? Yes. Okay. Let's see. Forgiven. And this is something, this is perfect. You are the best. You passed the test. All right. Great. Why? <laughs> because forbearance is everything but forgiving. And that was the big mistake of a lot of borrowers when the COVID start. When uh, when people start losing their jobs, that was the big, big, huge misunderstanding. Unfortunately, borrowers didn't take the time to call the mortgage company or the server of the loan. The server of the loan is basically people who collect your payment every month, okay? You know, or you probably don't know, but once we close your deal, we sell your mortgage. Let's say you all are clients, okay? We're going to pretend you're uh, agents and clients at the same time so we can kind of understand our, um, our class today. So let's say um, you are clients and um, you lost your job. So what, what people start doing is just because they heard, oh, they are forgiving you for three months. They are gonna forgive your uh, monthly payment. 
you can take advantage of the forbearance benefits. In March, with COVID start, the government signed a law named the CURS Act. So basically what the, the law says is the mortgage insured by the government automatically, automatically gives you that benefit. What that means is in the past, let's go back to before the COVID. If you had a um, problem with, because either you lost your job or you got illness or you, know, you had a hardship, you can call your bank, your server and say, hey, I cannot pay my mortgage right now. I need help. I don't know if you guys how many of you were with agents before 2008? You. Do you remember, right, a lot of people, unfortunately, stopping uh, paying their mortgage and losing their house. Mm -hmm. I know there were a lot of banks negotiating with people and people going through modi loan modification, which is completely different. Okay? Forbearance was an option at that moment. Forbearance already exists at the moment, but people didn't know because unfortunately, most of the time people don't take time, first of all, to ask. Sometimes people don't know as a borrowers that they have right to ask and call and they are afraid to call the mortgage company or the servant and say, hey, do you have any options for me other than foreclosing my, my mortgage or, or a mortgage loan modification? And forbearance already exists. What it changed with the COVID are the benefits of the forbearance or the terms of the forbearance. Basically, the government said, okay, if you got affected by the COVID because you lost your, you, you know how many people lost their job with the, with, when they closed the state and they closed everything. So basically what the, the CURS Act said is, okay, now if you have an insured mortgage loan, which is FHA, VA, USDA, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac loan, automatically you can take advantage of four burns. Okay, that's the difference between before and after COVID. Is it clear? Any questions? Okay, so basically um, what, what is a forbearance? There is for people who are in the room, uh, I gave you, I don't know if I can give it to you, but here it is. You have a folder with this page and let me give you a notepad and a pen just in case you want to take some notes after you eat. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So basically what I did for you is I um, put just some highlights, some important highlights of forbearance information just to you, keep it with you. Because let me tell you guys, to understand 100% the forbearance we will need at least a week <laughs> of classes. <laughs> yeah. It's too much information. Something that I want you to take with you today, which is probably the most important, you probably will forget everything I said here, but something that I really want you to take with you is if you have problems, paying your mortgage, or you have clients, or you have friends, or you have families are having problems to pay their mortgage loans, please advise them to call the mortgage services, please. Because even that the CARESAC say something, they do have the right to make it different because they are the only ones who really know. You cannot hear me clear through the Zoom? No, I just yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. Let me just finish our meeting. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you for coming. So they are the only 
one who are going to negotiate with you and the, your mortgage servicer is the only one who really know how good you are paying your mortgage loan. So that is very, thank you so very much. She is the best. Yes, she I is. think she will be my next loan officer assistant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I very, have people requesting taxes. Oh, okay, excellent, yes. So I can make more if they need, okay? So very, very important, please, if you have somebody asking you advices about forbearance, uh, advise them to call the server, the server of the mortgage. And again, that's basically the people who is collecting your monthly payment. Forget about the, 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 uh, the lender who gave you who closed the mortgage because, and I think I, I didn't finish my, my idea at the very beginning. Once we close your mortgage, we're gonna sell the mortgage to the second market. So your mortgage loan, if you keep your mortgage loan for the whole life of the mortgage, which is 30 years, let's say you live in the house for 30 years, you pay your mortgage for 30 years, you probably, your payment or your service probably is gonna change many times too many times yeah. <laughs> i would say 10 20 times once a year because that is normal in this system we sell the mortgage to the second market so when you have problems either before after the covid or at any time and you have problems with paying your mortgage please always call your service and negotiate with them you guys or any client, any borrower has rights. Because think about this, for us as the lenders, we don't want your houses. We don't need your houses, we need your money. So if you have, especially now, if you have issues paying your mortgage, we are gonna be willing to negotiate with you as long as you pay us, okay? Okay, so we're, um, we're gonna go to the little page because we're gonna go to review this a little bit. So what is a forbearance? Forbearance, and this is something something very, very important because I wanted you to keep this forgiving word in your mind. Forbearance is not forgiving. Forbearance is a temporary postponement of mortgage payment. It is a form of repayment relief granted by the lender. Okay, I'm gonna I wanna stop there because listen the the words they use to uh, uh, describe forbearance temporary very important temporary postponement. What that means? The you you can stop paying your mortgage for a certain period of time. The CARES Act for COVID says up to 180 days, don't forget, for mortgage insurance by the government. Do you have a, do you have, um, do you understand what is the difference between mortgage insured by the government and not insured by government? Are we clear on that or do you guys have questions about it? Does it mean just having an FHA loan versus a conventional loan? Correct, okay. exactly. So all the insurance mortgage, insurance by the government are FHA, VA, USDA, and Freddie, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac mortgage. Okay, so if you have one of those mortgage, you qualify automatically. Before COVID, to qualify for a forbearance, you have to prove, you have to send proof to the bank that you're having issues with your economy, that you lost your job, that you have, you know, very sick or something happened in your family that really, you can't really pay your mortgage. Right now, automatically. You just got the phone and say, hey, Mr. Bank, Mr. Service, I cannot pay my mortgage because of the COVID, I lost my job. Guess what? Done. You are in forbearance. 
period. So Fannie and Freddie are government insured? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. So uh, it's automatically. So that's another difference between forbearance before and after COVID. Before you have to prove it, now you just call, okay? And it's automatic. And after those 180 days, if you didn't find a job, if you didn't get your job back, because that happened a lot to people working on restaurants, bars, national parks, and all these people, they lost their job and some of them haven't get their job back checked. So you can call again and say, hey, I haven't get my job back. I still need an extended period of time to, to not be, because I'm not able to pay my mortgage. And guess what? They are gonna grant you another 180 days, okay? That sounds perfect, doesn't Okay, so be careful because let's go back to the definition. Temporary postponement of mortgage payment. It is a form of repayment relief granted by the lender. Loan owners or loan insurers may be willing to negotiate forbearance options because the loss is generated by property foreclosure typical of them. Okay, so I don't think, that, okay. Let's go to the key takeaways. The first one is basically part of the definition. The second one, the terms or a forbearance agreement are negotiated between the borrower and the lender, <clears throat> okay? That's very important because something that I always share with clients and agents, your mortgage is exactly like your fingerprint, okay? You all can have an FHA loan. Let's say all of us here in this room, we all of us have an FHA loan. No one is the same because every single person's financial situation is different. So you probably uh, had a lower um, a credit score. So you got a higher interest rate. So the amount where you qualify for was lower than mine because let's say I had a better a better credit score and I got a better interest rate. Well, because I make less money than you and I have more liabilities or you make more money than me, you probably do. I can see it on your face. <laughs> <laughs> so every single person, financial situation is different. So every single mortgage loan is different. So when people come to me and say, oh, because my cousin got an FHA and she got approved for 250,000 and she made less money than myself. Guess what? Her financial situation is different. So same thing happened when you are going to negotiate the forbearance with the survey of your mortgage. The, what are they normally going to take on consideration? how you pay your mortgage. If you are paying your mortgage for five or 10 years, always on time, they probably will be more willing to negotiate with you instead of negotiate with me that I'm paying always late. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So every single person, don't, don't forget that. A mortgage loan is like a fingerprint. Every single person is unique. Even if you are husband and wife, at the moment to qualify for, you guys are completely different. So let's say you are a nurse and I have another client who is a bartender. So who has more possibility or a higher possibility to get another job, especially now with the COVID? The nurse. So they might think, okay, I'm she- I'm sure you're <laughs> I choose the bartender. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and yeah, could be, I mean, who knows? But the logic says, okay, a nurse, because right now, they you need know, it. Yeah. they need it, exactly. So she probably lost her job because, I don't know, it was a, probably a private clinic, I don't know, but, the 
possibility, the probability that she got another job is higher than a bartender, especially when, I think there are a lot of bars that they open back, right? Yeah, in, mm -hmm. in this area. Yeah. But yes, but let's, let's think about March, April, May, all those months were terrible. So the, the servicer will be, you know, more willing to, to negotiate with those people, okay? Okay, the third one, the borrower must demonstrate the cost for repayment <coughs> appointment. So that that was must, you know, before the, the, the COVID. Right now it's automatically. Even for conventional loans, they are they are willing to negotiate and they are using kind of like the same guide, guidelines of the government. They are because I have heard a lot of people saying, oh yeah, I do have a more a, a conventional loan. I call my bank and you know, they gave me the same period of time for forbearance, okay? Uh, okay, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are offering assistance for homeowners with the survey back mortgage who are affected by COVID-19, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, that is for your information. That's, you know, like the big uh, key takeaways. I want to, I want you to take that with you and think about uh, those uh, points. So, forbearance. We said it's a temporary postponement of your payment. What that means? Got Let's say, back. thank you, yay! <laughs> After the stopping, but you continue. And this is the thing. A lot of people thought once you stop payment, the bank was going to forgive you. <laughs> and guess what? They do not forget anything. <laughs> I meant temporarily forgiven. That's what I really meant. I knew that you had to pay that. Yeah, no, but no, I know. I know you know. Believe me, I know you know, but a lot of people thought, and and the reason why I know is because I deal with them every day. I do have a couple. Listen this, and this is something we have to be very careful. I have this couple, they are uh, uh, adults. They are, you know, pretty old. Uh, but they just heard about forbearance. They both are working. They both have very good job. They both are doing very good money, but they thought, oh, that's a good opportunity. We can stop paying our mortgage. So let's call the bank and say, we can, we're not going to pay. We're going to get the forbearance. We're going to take the forbearance benefits. And they call and the bank say, yeah, go ahead. No worries. Mm -hmm. So the interest rate went down oh, yeah. and their mortgage is 5.350% interest rate because they closed like a year and a half ago when the rates were up, mm -hmm. were high. And they called me, Elba, we want to refinance our mortgage because we saw the rates are very low right now. Guess what? They cannot refinance their mortgage. Mm, because they're behind because they are not paying. They are not paying. And because of the volume of, of calls and the volume of, of people calling the banks and saying, I cannot pay, this, especially banks who are servicing the mortgage, they do not have time to take care of that people. It's too much. So I don't know how they are reporting, but in your credit report is showing under in a little note when we as a lenders pull up your credit, if you're applying for a mortgage loan, we're gonna see everything. Believe me. <laughs> so there is and, uh, and the credit report, the way we see it, there is a little space for comments. Your creditor can add comments to that space. And when you are in the forbearance period, it says under forbearance period. What is that telling us? You are not paying your mortgage. 
we don't know if you will be able to pay back to continue paying your mortgage on. So how, what make you think we want that mortgage? Make sense? Get the picture. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I see what you're saying, but if, if they have a lot of equity in their house anyway, wouldn't that be a good way to catch up on it? Okay. No, because... Do we get caught up? Yeah, they that's... wanted to show the, the mortgage. Oh, yes. You never sell because... your... I see what you're saying. Yes, yeah. but it's different if you sell your house. That's different. Right, and then they just catch it all up that way. You'd almost be better off to, so if anybody's behind, we should be encouraging them to just sell their house. It's right. over. Yeah, no, I mean, we can <laughs> Stick a fork in them, they're done. We can encourage you to do anything. I mean, we want you pay pay back. You want you pay us back. But if, you lo if you're not paying, if you stop paying because you have not a job, how you can do everything. How you, how you can even pay. qualify. Now, what's that do to someone's credit when they're in forbearance? Like if they do go to buy another property and they're they're in arrears on their other one, does that affect them negatively on their credit for their new house? It's not affecting them negatively. I mean, if the, if your question is if the credit score is going down, it's not supposed to. Okay. okay? It's affecting you because that comment, by that comment, we know you are still in that period. Now, let's say the three months pass, you got all like these people that they did it just because they want it, not because they need it. If they start paying back, if they, excuse me, if they are um, paying their mortgage back, the bank is gonna report them as a, a good, they're gonna make a good report and they're gonna remove that comment from the credit report. So that is different, okay? Now, I'm not 100% sure why, but we have seen some credit scores going down. We don't know, again, if it's the, because of the way the banks are reporting to that people, because some of those banks, they use an automatic system so they do not control what this their system is reporting to the credit bureau. Because you know, right, that that is the credit bureaus doesn't take your information automatically for what you do with your credit every day. It's not something that happened automatically. The bank has to report you. If the bank doesn't report you, the bureaus don't know what is going on with your credit. So we are not 100% sure how the banks are dealing with the volume of people doing exactly the same thing. So if they are doing automatic system in an automatic way, nobody's controlling that. So unfortunately, we have seen some people having problem with the credit report, with the credit, uh, credit score especially. Okay, so, okay, once, any other question? I have a question. Yes. Going back a little bit to the section where you read that Annie and Freddie are offering assistance for homeowners with a servicer-backed mortgage. Can you explain a little bit more with a servicer-backed mortgage? Does that mean that the mortgage is backed by Fannie and Freddie? Yes. And how can you determine that for when somebody's asking you? Well, that will be, okay, when a bank, sell your mortgage, you're gonna receive a letter letting you know who is the new owner. What if the, of what the, if the new original five or six? Yeah. What if the original lender is still servicing it? No. Then no. it's not. No, it's not. So only if your mortgage has been sold or transferred to a new service. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that happens normally all the time. I mean, that's... There's a couple of mortgage Nation lending, nation lending, yes, and the caliber loans. They will stick with their loans, but it's like yeah. ninety-five percent of them. Most of the time, also um, the the credit unions, they will because continue, yeah. they will continue servicing the mortgage, and the, the only reason why is because credit unions are nonprofit organizations. So that's the reason why. 
but we are prompted. So. <laughs> okay, there's it. Yeah, so let's say the 180 days passed already. You didn't pay your mortgage for that period of time. And now it's time for what? Do we start paying them? Do we start paying them? So what I'm telling people is if you cannot pay $1,500 per month, you won't probably, you won't be able to pay 4,500 after three months because- Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry that I stopped you like this. No Maybe worries. if uh, three months you didn't pay, the next month that you're going to pay, you need to pay it all at the same yeah. time? That's oh, what yes. forbearance means, not deferment. Deferment is at exactly. the end. That's forbearance, our next... these people are screwed. Yes, it's, it's like all three. That's, that's our name. They have to sell. That's right. That's right. Yes. You're a star. Yeah. <laughs> that was, and, and if you can see, the next we're going to review yeah. is deferment. So we're going to talk about deferment. But yes, the answer is or people. Yes. Yeah. yes. Or or people who just tried to play a game thinking that they were just going to save yeah. their money. Yeah, and unfortunately, thinking, some of them, yes. And that was the misunderstanding or misinformation about forbearance. They, they just heard, and I mean, I cannot blame anybody because this was crazy time from all of us. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know, I mean, what it was gonna happen to us, to our jobs, to our family. I mean, every, let me tell you, this is something that uh, it's not, I'm not advising anybody, okay? This is a disclaimer. I have to, <laughs> I'm not av advising anybody about this. I'm sharing just a personal uh, experience. experience. Thank you. When ba Bank of England sent us to work from home, I lost a couple of bills because I had people uh, uh, getting in a mortgage loan, people working for restaurants or bars. And you know, right. we couldn't move forward. We lost some so, people exactly. lost their stocks. They were about to pull 80 grand out. Um, Found out they yes. just lost 80 grand. There oh, you wow. go. I think we all so, lost a few. Let meals. me tell you, I sat with my husband and I said, Listen, we're gonna pay our mortgage and we're gonna put food on our table. If we cannot pay credit cards, we're not gonna pay credit cards. But we're gonna secure our roof and our food. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. Just be ready. We're gonna be fine, but we have to secure our roof and our food. We're gonna pay our mortgage. If we cannot pay cars, okay, we cannot pay auto loans. We have like a nice little something we can share on Facebook that says all this worded real nice that anybody who is in forbearance right now, it's way easier to get a new house and a lower interest rate yeah. than it's going to be the... If they have a job. I mean, if they have yeah. a job or... That's, the, yeah, that's the big selling they have problem to be right now. They have, that's the problem when they stop, when they go into the forbearance period. But you're saying it doesn't affect their credit yet. So this is they better hurry up. Not only do they need to sell, but they need to sell no, fast. But Within again, Within you have to be careful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm a realtor. I can help you with that sale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just yes. I just asked. I would love to have something to share like that. I would love do, I mean do something, they, yeah. they said when they were sharing this information that as soon as you were able to pay, you're going to pay it all. They did. We all knew what forbearance was, or forbearance was versus deferment. I was deferment. confused, actually. Yeah. I didn't really. Really? Yeah. I, I kept paying mine. I was scared. I mean, we, we, <laughs> we did, did too, but... No, you probably, as an agent, know because you probably talked through the years. I don't know if you guys, how many years yeah. been in the, in, the, in the field, but you probably have talked with a lot of different lenders, and you have learned through the time but as a client, as a borrower, a lot of people didn't know, didn't even know about the term. Well, the realtors didn't know said, either. We don't deal yeah, with forbearances. They just heard, no. oh, they, and that was the problem. These were right, oh, they are forgiving my mortgage loan for three months. Mm. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. So that becomes due in three three months four. or six months or whatever they work out with that lender. Correct. So once the and 180, one the first 180 days pass, you if you haven't get your 
your job back, you can call the bank and say, hey, listen, I need another 180 days. But again, again it will be another How three months. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't. So then there's have to going pay to be a lot of foreclosure going on. Exactly. That's why most of our investors have, have kind of held off for a second. Like everybody who wants to get out of their house is coming, but the investors are like sitting back like, Man, there is about to be. Did you see all the money they just made on the big short on the um on the malls? Yeah. I was just reading that article this morning. This this hedge fund just shorted this big mall stock fund thing, and they are going down so badly. This 31 year old lady who was like the analysis, she was already shorting them before uh before COVID hit because it was already going down. But, but I mean, J C Penney just filed bankruptcy. Uh, Neiman Marcus. I mean, so many of the anchors that hold these malls together, Sarasota Mall just filed bankruptcy. Yeah. Really? I mean, yeah. yeah. Not UTC. Oh. UTC will no, probably UTC. live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they even said, the, the analyst said, too, it's not over for all malls, just most of them. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. Westfield. Mm -hmm. Now, imports. Yeah. Well, everybody's working online. Going out. Right. Yeah. 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 Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, that's oh, your, yeah. that's your blue Amazon tickets right now. Amazon. Everybody. Google. Microsoft yeah. and Apple. Those Especially because chip. we're afraid to go to <coughs> stores and go shopping and you know. I did all my hope Yeah, me too. <laughs> shopping. Yeah, oh, me too. Even my my uh grocery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> and then just pull off to a drive by, throw it in. Yeah, yeah. Really, I love it. No, you, I just sent my husband. It's easier. Well, no, no, look, <laughs> if you do your grocery <laughs> shopping, if you order it online and go sit there, anything that they have to substitute, they upgrade you for free. So you right. can only win and you don't have to go in. Nice, I love it. <laughs> True. I love so, so yeah, so basically that's what forbearance <coughs> is. It's so more sad. trouble, no. more problems, bigger problems to our life dealing and fighting with COVID. That's exactly what it is. Now, do you remember at the very beginning what I said, what I want you guys to take with you today? Ha, this is the test. Oh. Ha, ha, ha. You said that it's not forgiven, <laughs> that it's not forgiven. <laughs> that doesn't count as we were in the meeting. I didn't hear the, the beginning. Okay. Okay, let me give you a clue. Wait, do the people on chat know? Oh, let's see if they know. Sorry. Does anybody remember know. what she said in the beginning? I remember her saying if you take one thing away from this, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, I said you probably will forget about everything, but I want you to take this away with you today. What are you going to advise your clients, your family? Is it going to talk to you? List your home. Not, not me. <laughs> to call, oh, to call, to call, to call, to call, to call the server? No. Uh, no, I know. What is it? Call your servicer. Call your mortgage law. <laughs> What? And that's where your you're payment asking, goes. That you can call them and ask for a forbearance. You can ask them to make a mix between forbearance and deferment, hmm. which will be better for borrowers. Okay. So, who wants to read what a mortgage deferment is? <clears throat> Oh, I can't. <laughs> so you want to take a break? Yes, please. Thank you. Go ahead. I do have. Go ahead, assistant. Okay. I'm done. Oh, her. Mortgage deferment is slightly different from mortgage forbearance. If your mortgage loan lender allows you to defer your mortgage payments for a period of time, the deferred payments are typically added on to the end of the mortgage loan, not to the end of the deferment period as they would be with forbearance. There you go. You see the big huge giant difference they said it's like a different it's a huge difference so with deferment it's like kind of like a student loan do you have experience with student loan that's what they do with student loan mm -hmm. the deferment okay I was so my student loan when i was in, in college good for you love you Okay, so I was you, done when I graduated. Yeah, I was too. <laughs> Great, congratulations. So basically, you as a client have right to call the servicer and ask or to negotiate your forbearance. And you can say, okay, 
And you can even ask and clarify before to sign the forbearance contract and ask, okay, how this is gonna work for me? How forbearance gonna benefit me? How do I have to pay you back? What is gonna happen with my credit report? What is gonna happen with the three month interest? When you say negotiate, does that mean just pleading your case that the reason you're not paying is because it's COVID related, that you're trying to be proactive? Thank you very much for that question. That, like how, how do you negotiate? Okay, people? basically right now after March 19, you can just call and say, hey, I lost my job because of COVID. They are not gonna ask you for proof. Okay. However, because they know you, because you are their client, they know if you stop paying before the COVID. So there's no way to negotiate if you were already behind on your payments. Okay? Yeah. That right. that's important. So it's not something that people are gonna take advantage of just because they didn't pay before they were behind already for any other reason. You have, it has to be after March 19. But that's unfortunately that people just have to call. Yes, you don't have to prove anything. So negotiating but, is just pleading your case. No, yes, exactly. Negotiating means, okay, I want you to explain to me how this is going to benefit me. How do I have to pay you back? Are you forgiving these three months? Unfortunately, that, that was something that people didn't know. And people just call and say, hey, I lost my job. I need to stop paying. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Client. I'm sorry to hear that blah, 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 blah. Sign this contract. And they, they didn't explain nothing because they didn't have the time. Because probably that person on the phone, taking care of that phone call, had another Ten a thousand people right. waiting. I just mm -hmm. wish you did this class around March, I know. Yes. April. And we couldn't say, you know, to know. all our um, database, send a nice, beautiful email to <clears> all <throat> our customers about, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or to even know to ask that question at a listing appointment. <clears throat> yeah. Now, because I, I will say think something. To ask, are you in forbear? Are you in forbearance or deferment mm -hmm. with, with your mortgage? But they can still your sell. mortgage up to date. Now, I will say something. Right oh, yeah, now, if you know it. somebody, <coughs> and again, yeah. what are you guys taking with you today? So we need to tell them that they need to call their service. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Okay. <laughs> this is, this is, I know questions. Real, real, real <laughs> I know, I know. Please speak up. Deferment. Mm -hmm. So if you if you call and try to do your kind of a negotiating, yes. Um, can you ask for a lower payment afterwards so you don't have that chunk? Yes. Or do you so, have uh, options, or is just only one option? No. Or <clears throat> Excuse me. Deferment has more options than forbearance. Deferment. This is the option one. Let's say. Let's say it this way. After the three months or the six months, they can either split your debt and the next twenty-five years of the mortgage life. Oh, okay. I like that one. Mm -hmm. I like that one. But you're gonna have a higher monthly payment. Mm -hmm. every month make sense yeah okay but there's a second option you can request or you can negotiate to add that amount of money to the end of your mortgage life so instead of paying your mortgage for 30 days you're gonna pay your mortgage for 30 days plus six months and you're gonna continue paying the same monthly mortgage payment. So it's not a balloon. Yeah, it's payment. not a balloon. It's just a separate of the time. Or parents is more like a balloon at the end of this three or six months. Okay. Yeah, okay. I kind of have now it in like a, a lease when you're that in a car. Gives you the opportunity if something is going like you know you're not secure about your new job or this whatever, you can refinance your mortgage once you start paying back your mortgage. That's a game changer. 
Don't tell anybody I said that, okay? <laughs> no, but that's a good option because once you get um, uh, on time with your mortgage, if you have problem with your mortgage payment, you can refinance your mortgage. Like this couple, they want to refinance because interest rates are lower and they are paying 5.350 but because they are in the forbearance period they cannot refinance the mortgage right now they have to wait until that forbearance period pass they have to start paying the mortgage loan but there's another little problem with for i think there's another little problem. don't say i said that <laughs> there's another little problem reported. with forbearance oh <laughs> You should tell me that before. <laughs> but it's a secret between all of you, a hundred and yes. how many people? <laughs> what happens at KW? Especially with the L five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, there's another problem. Don't don't forget this. Banks do not report to the credit bureau every day. How often do they report? Monthly. Once a month. Mm -hmm. And be careful because there are some banks that report quarterly. Mm -hmm. So if you start paying today, you got in track with your mortgage payment, but your bank is not reporting onto the next three months. But we do have a solution for that. So you can call your bank and request a copy of your contract or your agreement with them and say, hey, he's paying black, he's paying black, he's paying back, blah, 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 blah. So we can work with that letter for a refinance. Make sense? Yes. Makes sense. Okay. Um, I have a couple of samples, but unfortunately I cannot share with you how the credit works obviously we can keep it already in privacy for my client, how the um, the credit report shows the forbearance period on your credit report. It's not supposed to lower your credit score. <clears throat> so be careful when you're saying that forbearance is not affecting your credit. It's not affecting your credit uh, score, okay? Not your credit history. Do we understand there's a difference between credit history and credit? So you're saying that if I look at my score, it won't change it. But if you were to pull my report, my report I will see it. Then you can so see it because now they're looking at derogatories and like all the information. And I was explaining to them that there's a, there's a little spa on the bottom of each account that says comments and your bank can add comments to your credit report when they report you and they are adding under forbearance period. So we know that you are not paying your mortgage payment. Can all agencies do that for credit reports? Mm -hmm. Good yeah. to know. Mm -hmm. Now, once you got back in track and you know the report period passed and blah, 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 that can take another three months, you're good to go. That disappeared from your credit report. Now, again, I we have seen and we had a, a, a conversation the other day about it. We really don't know as a loan officers why we start seeing the credit score going down. We are not sure if it's about something extra the bank is reporting. We don't know what kind of system the banks are using to report to the credit bureaus because again, the high volume of people doing the same. <clears throat> is it also possible that that's not the only bill they're not paying? Right. There's a problem. That is a high possibility. Yes. And not the same people, you know, will handle it the same. Yeah. And we don't even know if banks are contracting, subcontracting people just to handle calls, and people don't even know what they are doing, don't even know how to negotiate because even, I mean, Clients are not negotiating anything. Go ahead, please. What is the percentage after three months of people that actually get back on track and are able to repay versus the people that 
have to renegotiate mm. again? I'm not sure really. Well, I, can, be, I can find out. Couldn't you use the same numbers for when the market crashed? It's funny because I remember I came into the market in 2010. Okay. And we had these type of conversations, right? And then we also had like Texas had mandatory, like, that they put clauses in listing contracts about are you under forbearance? Are you under this? That way, as a listing agent, you would know. I'm kind of surprised that Florida doesn't have anything like that. Because they came out of all of the people who rent homes mm -hmm. and landlords would be under foreclosure. And next thing they know, they no longer, you know, there was a tax that you need to get out of your house in 60 days. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Gave this man a year lease. I personally believe, and this is, you know, my thought that we're gonna see a lot of changes in the near future, probably in the next couple of months, because remember, nobody was ready for COVID. Nobody, states were not ready, nobody was ready. So I so think- you can't use those numbers as, a, as an indication of like 2010 to see if there's any type of predictor for now, or is that just too extreme? Yeah, it's, it, there are two different crises. That's true. Yes, what was because stress, remember, housing? back in two thousand, the houses were just not worth it anymore, and this right. one's the the money's it's not there to. Yeah, yeah it's, it's different. So we should wait to wait for the data to you know generate it because it, there are they are two completely different prices. This is this starts as a healthy crisis, health issues. It wasn't like. A, real estate market. Hold on, Mama. She has. That's okay. Kind of going along with what Katie's saying. So the way I'm looking at it, if people are taking on average three months of forbearance <clears throat> to start with, right, then you've got April, May, and June. Mm -hmm. that they're, that, so their yeah. payments would have been due beginning of July. And then they can get maybe an additional three months. Uh -huh. So now you've got July, August, and September. So I'm predicting Sorry. at the end of September or end of October maybe is when we're really going to start seeing. Thank you. So I will say they might call their service now and say, hey, can we still negotiate this? Can we still do something? Um, I really hope they will be willing to negotiate with you because I don't think banks and servers wants to see mm -hmm. people losing their houses because again, that's not our, I mean, we don't we don't want your houses we want your money <laughs> right and you that's want, why i always say banks don't want to be in the real estate no 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 we don't they want try that. they didn't do a good job last time <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah Plus because again slows. when you have that high volume of people i mean you don't know how to deal with them well and not only that i can say as a as a landlord i got some tenants that are struggling throughout the month but they get it to me mm -hmm. and like yeah like I'm not even hitting them with late fees or anything, even though that's what we signed up for. As long as they can clean it up by the next month for a hundred within a hundred dollars. Like and I feel like the banks for all the effort it's gonna be to to take these people's home, let alone the fallout. I mean, just a bunch of rich getting richer and poor getting poor. I got investors just poised for for, yeah, right. for yeah. the glut. Yeah. And I'm having to tell people, I'm like, they're like, there's gonna be a bunch of foreclosures coming. I'm like, yeah, it's not gonna matter for they're us. Like Doberman's on a chain. Mm -hmm. I told them it doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter for us because we have more buyers than we have there, sellers, and it doesn't matter for there us. There are a lot of invest investors waiting for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've been waiting ever since the start. Yeah. And we're holding on. Now um, something that I, any other questions? Okay. Um, I just want to say thank you so very much. You are fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> well, we look forward to having you back again. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I thank you so very much. Something that I want to share with you before we close the class is right now, we do have a lot of good opportunities for buyers. I just want to share with you, I am plotting a loan for a, a lady. She is going with conventional. There is a program that most of the agents don't know about it. It's a conventional mortgage loan, Home Ready. I don't know if you heard about it, but Home Ready gives you or gives the borrower the opportunity to 
lower the PMI, the price is cheaper. The down payment for conventional loan is 3%. It's even lower than FHA. Interest rates are better. I'm plotting a mortgage loan for that lady with 2.875%. like it. So. The 3% down. 3% down. Okay. What's that called? Uh, conventional home ready. Is that only for um, primary occupants or? Yes, it has to be. I mean, it has to be first time home buyer to get the 3%, but you still can enjoy the benefits of home ready going with 5% if you're not first time. So buyer. define first time home buyer. Is a first time home buyer a first time home buyer since you bought your last home at X amount of years? It's first time home buyer to go with Ever? the 3%. Ever? No, Ever? to go with the 3%. Yeah, but I mean, like, ready. what makes you a first time home buyer? Like not having a home for three years or how long? Not having a home for three years. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. that's how I make yeah. sure. I always have to make sure. Yeah. Now, let's say mm -hmm. um, you already have a home and you want to move to a bigger home and you want to leave this as a rental home and you want to buy a, prim a primary home. You're not, you are not a first time home buyer, but you can still go with conventional home ready. 5%. Mm -hmm. You're going to lower your PMI and you're going to lower your interest rate right. because of the home rate. Hey, why don't people do the, the 80 and the 15 HELOC and then only put down 5% with no PMI? Say that again, I'm sorry. Put down 80% and then a 15% on, you know, 75% of the other 20% on a HELOC and then not have any PMI at all. I mean, that's my brother in law does for people. Okay. Uh, right? Do what? I always knew that as a piggyback loan. Well, like, it's a, just a HELOC on the 20% that you put down. You just took it that day. Yeah, and but you are you talking loans. about refinancing or No, I'm talking about on a on a first-time purchase, you can get it down to 5%, even if it's 20% down by taking a HELOC out the same day on, you know, 75% of the 20% you just put yeah, down. Yeah, that's, that's a bridge loan. And that's, and that's not a bridge loan. That's a, a, that's a brand new loan. That's that's a HELOC. And, never mind. I, I just didn't know. Well, yeah, because when you're using a HELOC from another property, right? No, a HELOC from the same property, just okay. like doing a reverse purchase where you're taking, you're getting a reverse mortgage the same day you bought the property. But this is getting a HELOC the same day you bought the property. You put 20 grand down, but you didn't. You put you put um 5% down because you got a 75% HELOC on the money you would have put down. Okay. So then you have the 15% the HELOC and you have- I a, can ask and be 100% okay. sure. I'm just saying it's a neat way to answer. cut out the PMI anyway yeah. and still have 5% Because down. I- Do they allow a second lien mm -hmm. to be recorded on the same day? Yeah, all the time. That's how they do a reverse mortgage. You buy you buy a yeah, house for half, for half down. You buy yeah. a house for half down and you never make a payment because you took a reverse mortgage the same day you would have put all the money down. I've done that a few times. With the regular <laughs> conventional loan, I mean, the only way to avoid the PMI is going with the 20% of payment. Oh, right. Well, yeah. I'm saying so, that if they did 20% down and then borrowed 75% of it back, then they did put 20% down. A separate loan. So yeah. I was in my. For the 20%. I was yeah. reading yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Um, I was reading a journal the right. other night, and they were saying how Franny May, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac now have the ability to reduce their rates a little bit. And so they're recommending um, agents to go back to their lenders. And if they have any pre-approvals that are more than 30 days long, to ask them if they're still in that window because they have the, because now Freddie Mac recently had the right to change their numbers about time. Is that accurate? Am I, am I understanding this Yes, correctly? it is, it is. And again, it's calling your server. Mm -hmm. And because that's one of the options for instead of go with forbearance, go with um, no, no like she's talking about the pre approval. She's saying before you have a house to be in forbearance on, yeah, before you're talking about just a regular pre approval before to buy in the house, yeah. So, Freddie Mac and Freddie May, because of the situation now, I'll send you the article. They're saying okay. that they have the ability to, yes, because let me tell you, points. right now the market is changing, right? Because it went up, yes, so it did go up a little bit. Well, rates. And this is something you, as an agent, has to um, has to know. Rates are going absolutely crazy, and one day they can change from very low to very high. Mm -hmm. They are like right. every day. And so, so now that Freddie May, Freddie May, whatever the phrase, no. <laughs> have the ability to change their requirements and stuff, you have to make sure that the lender, when they did a pre-approval, is still under those same requirements. 
Because if they change within 30 days of when they originally did the pre-approval, then they could be no longer getting that same right and they'll change. I, I feel like the True Love's had that type of situation recently. Cool. So just okay. do your diligence and contact that lender to make sure that they still qualify. Because if that, yeah, like if you look at pre-approval, if it's 30 days old, then you're going to have to make sure that they're still in compliance with the new requirements Within that Freddie may have had. Yeah. On top of what some lenders are doing their own. I forgot that was called when they do their own okay. on top of that. Yeah. Let's have called. Yeah. Yes, now I'm cold. I was like, <laughs> first it was super hot, but now it's cold. Do you have this in PDF that you can send it to us? Yes. Email? Yes. Send yes. mm -hmm. it to me and I'll send um, it to everyone. Okay. Kit does. I already scanned it. And I do have more information. So I'm going to send me. it to you. Okay. So because I just put some, you know, some. Thank you. So, uh, at the very end of that page, I add some uh, difference between uh, forbearance and deferment. So that's very important information. Okay. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, um,